The definition of a function in mathematics has changed dramatically. Earlier definitions tended to centre around the idea of some kind of rule or expression which acted upon a variable in order to give some sort of an output. And so a function could be thought of as some kind of mechanism, f of x, which takes in a variable x, changes it according to a given formula and returns an output y. However, with the advent of techniques like Fourier series, it became a little more complicated to define what kind of rule or expression was valid as a function. Take the square wave for example. The function may be given as an infinite trigonometric series, and at the time, ideas such as this were challenging for the mathematics community to make sense of. There are a couple of issues a good definition of a function should address. For example, take f of x equals 1 over x. The problem here is that for x equals 0, the function isn't defined. So, let rule 1 be that the output of a function should be defined for all inputs. That being said, is 1 over x a function? The second issue is that we want to avoid situations like this, where there could be multiple outputs for a given input. So, let rule 2 be that the output of a function should be unambiguous for all inputs. We'll first start with a graph of a function. Given that any point in this xy plane represents a given xy coordinate, one way to think about a function isn't to think of it as a rule, but maybe a set of coordinates, namely the set of coordinates represented by this blue line. But then, what is the set of coordinates that make up the xy plane? Well, we now have to introduce the product of two sets. Given a set A and a set B, the product of a and b, a cross b, is the set of all ordered pairs x and y, such that x is in a and y is in b. That is, for all elements x in a and y in b, there'll be a corresponding element x, y in a cross b. For example, let a be the set containing 1, 2 and 3, and let b be the set containing 4, 5 and 6. Then a cross b is a set containing the ordered pairs 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, and 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6. Visualising the sets and their product this way gives a nice insight into how the xy plane is formed of the product of two sets. In this case, we often have the xy axes representing the set of x and y belonging to the real numbers. And so in that respect, the xy plane is a set r cross r. Now, the next concept we need to introduce is the relation. It's possible to divide a set into two parts if something about the elements can be evaluated as true or false. Take, for example, the set A of numbers 1 to 8. The expression x in A, such that x is less than 4, divides the set into two subsets. The subset for which this is true, containing 1, 2 and 3, and the subset for which this is false. We define a relation on sets A and B as a subset of A cross B. Specifically, it's the set of those ordered pairs X and Y, such that some statement comparing X and Y holds true. For example, the relation greater than, applied to sets A and B, gives a set of all ordered pairs X and Y in A cross B, such that X is greater than Y. If we let a and b be the set of real numbers, then the relation greater than gives the region of the xy plane where x is greater than y. This is the region below the line y equals x. We're now ready to write down the definition of a function. We use the concept of a relation to define a function, the relation itself being that y is equal to f of x. However, f of x must follow some rules in order to avoid some of the issues we saw earlier. Let a and b be sets. A function f from a to b is a subset f of a cross b, such that if x is in a, there exists y in b such that the ordered pair x and y is in f. And if for x in a, there exists y and z in b such that x and y is in f and x and z is in f, then y is equal to z. These two rules are a little bit cryptic, so let me explain exactly what they mean. A function from set A to set B maps A onto a subset of set B. We call A the domain of the function and B the codomain. 
Rule 1 ensures that, given any element x in A, there is always a corresponding y in B such that x and y is in F. In everyday language, that means the function must give a valid output for every value put into it. And so, coming back to the function 1 over x, which isn't defined at x equals 0, we see now that restricting the domain of f so that it doesn't include 0 solves this problem. By rule 2, we also prevent a single value from the domain A be mapped onto two distinct values y and z in the codomain B. This prevents us from allowing cases such as this with multiple values. Again, if for a given x there exists y and z such that xy in f and xz in f, then y is equal to z. This is saying that such a case like this, where we clearly have two distinct values y and z being the output of our function at x, would not be allowed under our definition of a function, and hence the curve shown here doesn't represent a function, strictly speaking. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.